time for our contributor. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm extremely excited, extremely. All right, so this uh, fantastic NBA player was with the Knicks from 1999 to 2003, impactful for sure, a part of that magical 1999 run with the squad. The one and only Latrell Sprewell joins us now. Latrell, how are you? Thanks for coming through. Morning, Spree. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm doing good. How are you guys? Fantastic. Now, in the break, I know you had a little bit of feedback for us on our random power rankings list of NBA rappers. Who did you say was one for you? Well, I said Shaq. You know, that's my generation. We came out together in 92. We were drafted the same year. And um, I just love the fact that he did that album with Biggie. I'm a huge Biggie fan. So that, that pretty much did it for me. Dame is a newer generation. Shaq's more old school. You know, he's got the breaking in his in his jeans, pop locking and all that stuff. So I would say Shaq, that's just because I'm old school though. <laughs> well, you can never you can never disrespect Can't Stop the Rain or Foo Schnickens or I mean Big Pun. I mean young the Peter Guns and Lord Tariq. Like he's made records exactly. with everybody. So not a not a bad number one. Not a bad number one, Spree. But we got some hoops to talk about. Monica, what we got, man? Okay. What we got? All right, Spree, so um we got to just talk this current NBA season, right? It's scheduled to start December 22nd. The draft will be the 18th. The biggest thing has been the turnaround. You're an OG. You're a veteran. But also, you did it. So you understand the grind in a way that Kaz and I and our listeners or viewers might not be able to. What are your thoughts? Well, I think it's going to be tough for the teams that had a longer layoff. I know the year I got suspended and traded to to the Knicks, I was off for a year or so. And um, actually, when we got back to practicing, I ended up having a stress fracture just from being off so much. I mean, I went out and you know, I worked out and did weight work, but you, you just can't get that game simulation and the way you practice. Um, you, you just can't replicate that. So I ended up having that stress fracture. So I'm a little concerned about the guys that have had a really long layoff. Wow, that's an interesting perspective. We haven't heard it that way. There's more concern about the play, the teams that we're playing and the short turnaround, but you said the exact opposite. Yeah, it's, a, it's the opposite for me. I mean, you just you, you can't simulate game speed and practice speed and, and, you know, just the pounding your body takes, going up and down the floor, jumping, running, all of that stuff. It's just you, you, can't, you can't simulate that until you get out on the floor with guys. So you know, guys are going to have to kind of ease their way into it. I wouldn't go out there going 110% on the first couple of days. That's how you get yourself hurt for sure. Now, would you say that's the biggest storyline going into this new season? I mean, obviously, we have teams with the short turnaround because of the bubble. We have teams with the long turnaround uh, because they haven't played in almost 200 days. But what do you think is the biggest storyline going into this new, new shortened season on December 22nd? Well, I think it's going to be just that. I mean, the team, some which teams that that had the long layoff, you know, how how do they manage that? How do, do you come in and you try to push right away? It's been so long. I know the guys are going to be anxious to get out on the floor and do what they do because they've been off for so long. So, you know, trying to rein those guys in and hold them back is going to be difficult. Um, for the guys that were in the bubble, I, I think they're going to be fine. They they have some time to go in and play and, and they get their bodies used to a game of speed, and so I, I think they'll be fine. Danny Green sort of caused a little bit of a stir, I guess now two weeks ago, when he said yeah. that LeBron wasn't going to show up if we started December 22nd. Then LeBron, jokingly on his barbershop show, um, said, you know, he wouldn't be going hard. He would be cherry picking. There is something to be said about low management spree, but at the same time, I mean... I don't even know. I'm going to let you finish that. Load management, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of load management. I mean, when I played, we went out, you played every game if you could, and you played every minute. I played a lot of high minutes. I never really wanted to come out of the game when I was playing. So I just wanted to be on the floor and, and try to do what I could do to help my team win. But I also understand these guys, you know, it, it's a different era. You know, I, I can't really get on the guys for – for one in the low management. I think Popovich started that with Tim Duncan and those guys, Tony Parker and, and, and Manu. So if you really want to blame anybody, you kind of got to look at Popovich because he's the first person to do that. Now we're talking about, uh, you know, obviously you're with those classic uh, late 90s, early 2000s Knicks team, a little bit rough and tumble, a little bit rough around the edges. 
But, you know, a lot of old school players are like, you know, the NBA has moved away from that. It's a lot more wide open. People just pacing and spacing and shooting and all that type of stuff. What are your thoughts on that? And what are your thoughts on the, the way the league is going? Not being as physical as it used to be, but lots of offense, lots of up and down, lots of load management. So there's a lot of more minutes to play. What are your thoughts on that, Spree? Well, I'm old school, so I like I like the game when it's a little more physical. I mean, that's just the way I play. So you, you know, it's old school, like I said. But at the same time, I do I do sort of wish I played in this era because the way that I play, getting up and down the court with the fast pace and just shooting threes, you know, that fits my style with the way I played. So I think that I would have really did well in today's game. But at the same time, you know. I, I think it's a little soft, but, you know, I don't think the guys are soft. It's just the way they're calling it. You can't even touch anybody. Everything's a flagrant foul now. So that's the only thing I would really change. But I, I would love to play in today's system because it just looks like it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of points being scored. And, and the way that I played getting up and down the court, I think I would have had a lot of fun in, in today's game. Now, Spree, I like how there... you managed to work soft in there, but also a very complimentary <laughs> of today's game. Go ahead, Cass. Spree, is there a pl- you mentioned that you'd love to play in today's league, especially, you know, seeing how many times you got up and down on the garden floor. Is there a player out there that you right. watch that reminds you of yourself on the floor? Yeah, I get this question a lot, and then I, I always turn to Russell Westbrook. I mean, Wes is that he's the way he attacks the basket. He's always going 110 miles an hour. He brings maximum effort every time. And uh, he plays with that aggressiveness, that scowl on his face. And that's a lot like the way that I played. So I, I think if there's one person I would point to first, I would say him. Um, I, I just love to, I love to watch him play. And I, I think he, I played a little bit like that too. Man, there's, there's so many different ways that I want to go off of that answer. So, Kaz, if you don't have a burning question after my question, let me get a follow-up. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I got you. <laughs> Russ. <laughs> Spree, and we're not about bashing organizations, but obviously I'm sure you're up to speed that Houston seems to be having some problems, um, and Russ seems wants w- seems to want to get out of that organization. You're a guy that didn't spend your entire career with one organization, but what do you think of player movement, players being able to voice what they want, use their platforms, and almost force what they want out of owners and stuff? I mean, it is their career, but what's your take on all that? Yeah, hey, I, I love it. I just, you know, I think the People, you know, when the management did it, it wasn't a big deal. Now that you have players doing it, it seems like everybody has a problem with it. I don't see a problem with it. I think guys just really want to win. And it um, seems like in today's game, having a championship is, is, is one of the important things that, that you need to have on your resume these days. I mean, the guys like Charles, and, you know, he never got a ring. I never got a ring. But I think a lot of people still appreciate the way we play, you know, even if you didn't necessarily get a ring. There's a lot of guys that were Hall of Famers that didn't get a championship but you know uh, there's a lot of emphasis played on uh, on getting a, a ring these days so I don't mind the guys you know get together and, and figure out what team they want to be on to be successful okay. now now we're talking about uh, a lot of players coming back a lot of coaches coming back Tom Thibodeau new head coach of the New York Knicks former assistant for many years back in the 90s uh, Tibbs brings a lot of hard edge, man. Brings a lot to the table, and I feel like New York might really enjoy that style of play. What are your thoughts on Tom Thibodeau leading this Knicks and this Knicks franchise into the next, uh, you know, frontier of their uh, season? Well, well, I'm biased when it comes to Tibbs because he coached me, and actually, when I was there, I would work out a lot after practice and after shoot around. And Tibbs was the coach that worked with me every day when I would stay after late and get up shots and get up extra free throws. The one thing you know he's going to bring is a defensive mentality. The guys are going to have to go out and play hard for tips. He's going to stay on them. He's going to make sure they're doing the right things defensively to make sure the team is successful on that side of the basketball. Um, that's one thing I know for sure. I, I don't know. When he coached me, he Jeff did most of the offensive stuff, but Tibbs was a stickler for defense, and I know he's going to do that when he comes here for sure. <laughs> 